So the video, Searching for Here, is a project that I started in 2016. And it really, you know, I would say that the kind of seed of, of the whole idea in the project came from a trip to Beijing. I was there in 2012 as part of a residency and a museum show at the Inside Out Museum. This kind of growing built landscape, what that means, what that implies for the kind of quote unquote natural landscape, what the intersections are, the parallels, the interruptions you know, from one to the other. And so this, this project was really born from that. So I took photographs of four cities, including Beijing, and used those photographs as the basis for the stop motion animation. So it's really you know, very old school, printing them out. You know, I had a whole setup in my studio, this animation station, and, and had the printed out photographs in my camera station right above it, and kind of hooked through my computer. So I would make a mark, take a picture, make another mark, take a picture, make another mark, take a picture. And you see a lot of fluidity in the video itself because you also see the ink drawing, you see this whole process. And that, to me, was really important also that the hand be very present because ultimately it's a story about this landscape that is in many different places at once, you know, these four different cities that are photographed from different vantage points and then drawn in such a way that the cities merge, they become one landscape, they become kind of an unreal landscape, they become these kind of visionary buildings, they become carved up into territory. It's all these different ways in which we define here. For me, the video is is actually very uneasy. There's a very distanced quality to it, and although you know the hand is there and it's something that I very much care about and I'm invested in it, there is an uneasiness to the way that we see these worlds and often they become conflated and places become abstracted and commodified to be carved up and parceled out and sold off. And that's a very different relationship from actually inhabiting and living with and collaborating with a place. And I think that especially the first section you know, where the city comes together and there are all these bright colors and there's something kind of triumphant about it and beautiful, I felt like it's almost too celebratory. And I think that the music really helps in bringing a tone that is this kind of dissonance and that was really, really critical in guiding the visceral reaction to a piece. The whole series is called Neither There Nor Here, which is a title that then felt really appropriate for the entire show in, in that it touches on that idea of, of place that I was talking about with the video and that I think permeates each of these in a very different way, each of these bodies of work in the show in a different way. I was in New Mexico. So I'm, I'm based in New York, but had been doing a fellowship at the American Academy in Rome and had to leave abruptly when the pandemic hit and ended up back in New Mexico, and my brother kept on sending me these links to live webcams in Rome. And so it was this very bizarre kind of being someplace, being someplace in a way that you never would be there, but being so distanced at the same time. And then I said, well, I'll bet that they have these in New York, and of course they do. There's a sense of being in multiple places at once, which was really the reality that I think many of us were living throughout that pandemic. These webcam images seem to capture part of that, and so I started collecting them, printing them out, and then drawing on top of them. And so that drawing was a way to bring that very distanced, mediated place back into the very present space. And I was talking about this with the video, that for me, the, the hand and the physical presence is something that is really important. It's about this being neither here nor there. You're not really in one place. You're not really in another place. You're, you're in both. And so I think that in a way, engaging in this kind of digitized, distanced, mediated reality, but then bringing it back to the hand and, and making sure that the physical body is inserted through the making is also a way of, of talking about loss of place and connecting it to that conversation about really the importance of this physical, natural setting that we inhabit and the responsibility for relating to it in an immediate way. In some ways, there are these kind of two separate moments. Moving into the main gallery, all of these drawings are made by placing these stencils behind the paper, rubbing and revealing the image through that rubbing process. And then there's a lot of playing back and forth with erasure and adding again. But it's actually a process of building. So in a way, it, it's doing what that architectural reference is, is to. It's actually building an image 
and uh, improvisationally in this case. In fact, the cobbled together aspect of the paper was a result of that improvisation, just starting to play with the, with the rubbings. The paper itself grew as the images grew. And I, I also like that idea of hybridity and things that are maybe not originally formed as one thing coming together to create a, a larger whole. Is it architectural? Is it geological? And they, they really shift for me back and forth between those. And, and so that title, The Landforms, is also playing with that a little bit. Form is a very kind of action, imposition, human giving form to something, but it's also like a landform. Plate movement that's erosion, that something's been formed over, you know, land has been formed over time. It's, it's that back and forth between those two worlds yet again. Printmaking is something that I return to again and again in my work, and I think that one of the reasons that I love it so much is because it really is a collaboration with you know, whomever I'm working with. And this master printer, Mitchell Marty, is fantastic in his, his press, Interbang Press. We met and talked about what we might be working on, and then you know, he delivered some materials, and then we would meet in the parking lot, pop the back of the car and look at the proofs and decide what needed to be tweaked, and then meet again two weeks later and, you know, and tweak again, which seems kind of appropriate with the whole theme about you know, place and connectedness and disconnectedness. You know, it was a pandemic I was doing. I was outside and not seeing a lot of other people. But there was a lot of thinking about these other worlds that I'm in at the same time. And this, you know, New York and the saturation with construction and that built reality. But thinking about that as I'm walking down the canyon or surrounded by a pretty unpeopled landscape in many ways, although the vestiges and impacts of humanity are very deeply embedded in it. So those prints, again, came out of that swirl of ideas. I want to be careful about qualifying it because I do talk about this naturalness built environment as things that are separate and often interacting in ways that are interwoven and also oppositional, but they're very integrated and there's not, I don't see it as a clear dichotomy. But I feel as though the physical world around us is changing. And talking about the physicality is also a way of bringing it back to like, look at the physical natural world. And that has environmental overtones. You know, I'm deeply concerned about the climate crisis. And, and so I think that in a way, engaging in this digitized, distanced, mediated reality, but then bringing it back to the hand and, and making sure that the physical body is inserted through the making is also a way of talking about loss of place and how we reclaim that, how we inhabit it, how we care about it, and connecting it to that conversation about really the importance of this physical, natural setting natural in quotes, but setting that we, that we have in the responsibility for relating to it in an immediate way.